Hello there, I'm Dr. Benjamin Norris from Frostburg State University and in this video I'm going to wrap up a three video series on the stereochemistry of electrocyclic reactions. I plan to summarize the Woodward-Hoffman rules for electrocyclic reactions and then we'll have some practice problems. In two videos prior to this that you can find linked in the comment and the description below, I introduced the stereochemical outcome of electrocyclic reactions under thermal conditions and under photochemical conditions. The summary of these are of these observations or this stereo selectivity are summarized as the Woodward Hoffman rules. Now Woodward and Hoffman did this work decades ago and ultimately received a Nobel Prize for helping to understand the mechanisms in stereochemistry of pericyclic reactions, not just electrocyclic reactions. So, I'm going to make myself a little table here. And we're going to fill it in. And we define our, we divide our types of reactants into those that have 4n electrons, so an even number of electron pairs, and those that have 4n plus 2 electrons, or, or an odd number of electron pairs. And the Woodward-Hoffman rules give us a understanding of whether the stereochemical outcome will be governed by conrotatory or disrotatory motion in the electrocyclic reaction. And so for 4n electrons with thermal, uh, using under thermal conditions, we get conrotatory motion. For 4n plus 2, we get disrotatory motion under thermal conditions. And then things are opposite under photochemical under photo oh, sorry, things are opposite under photochemical conditions. Right. So here's the table. This is it. These are the Woodward Hoffman uh, rules. Make my line a little bigger. Here we go. This is it. So we can use this information to help us predict the stereochemical outcome of various reactions under different conditions. Okay. So let's do this one. Okay. Here's an electrocyclic reaction that's being done under heat or thermal conditions. And the first thing we need to do, all right, we know we're under thermal conditions, but we need to know whether we have 4n electrons or 4n plus 2 electrons. And so what we need to do, we count up the pi electrons in the pi bonds in the system. And there are two pi bonds here. Right? Four pi electrons. That's an even number of electron pairs. So for this one, we want to go up to the table, read for 4n electrons, thermal conditions, conrotatory motion. Okay. So that means that as the um, orbitals and the atoms rotate, the orbitals are rotating together clockwise or counterclockwise. Okay. And that means that those things, those groups that are pointing inward together are going to rotate one up and one down away from each other. There are four electrons in the, the system, so we're going to get a cyclobutene. Okay. And let's say the methyl group is going to rotate down, the ethyl group then rotates up. Okay. And this other methyl group that's present uh, on the back, on the other side of the molecule remains attached to the carbon atom it's attached to. It doesn't uh, change, and 
you know, that position is planar, so we don't represent any stereochemistry there. We wanted to draw the mechanism. You know, it's a pericyclic reaction. Mechanism is pretty simple. There's our mechanism. And because our reactant is a chiral, this is also going to form the other enantiomer if we get the uh, rotation happening in the opposite direction. And then, just for, for kicks, I'll draw that other enantiomer. And then we'll do another one. Right, there it is. Right, you get the other enantiomer when the groups rotate in the opposite direction. Here is another example. This one's done using photochemical conditions, so that HV means UV irradiation. Alright, and again, we have 6 pi electrons, it's 12 total electrons. I'm sorry, no, we have 6 pi, we have, sorry, do this wrong. 3 pi bonds, which is total of 6 pi electrons. This is an odd number of electron pairs. We'll draw the mechanism. And we're going to, this because we're under photochemical conditions with 4n plus 2 electrons, we're going to have con rotatory motion. So these things that are on the outside, one of them is going to rotate up and one of them is going to rotate down. There are hydrogen atoms in these positions. One will rotate up and one will rotate down. So when this ring closes together to give the Jekyllin kind of system here, we're going to get a trans ring fusion like this. And again, we're going to get both enantiomers because the, the reactant is achiral. Let's do one more. This one's also under photochemical conditions. Here's a larger system. There are four pi bonds here, eight electrons. And we can draw the mechanism. Again, the mechanism can start at any pi bond. And all it needs to do is go around the circle. And it can go around the circle clockwise or it can go around the circle counterclockwise. So you can draw the mechanism in either direction. And so this reaction is going to generate an eight-membered ring. And it's got four, uh, eight, eight electrons, four pi bonds. So we have to go up here and look at our table. Four electrons, photochemical, dis rotary. So disrotary means that things are going to look like they're rotating together. So things that are pointing in the same direction are going to continue to point in the same direction. All right, these two groups on the coming off of the end here, since they're both pointing in the same direction, are going to both rotate down or both rotate up. Let's get the... Uh, structure of our product here. And um, this product molecule is not chiral, so even though I'm you know, representing the, the, the relative orientation here, there's no enantiomer to draw. This is a meso compound. It's also interesting to note that this reaction can be relatively not reversible because the reactant had a the reactant has four pi bonds in conjugation, and the product only has three. So it stands to reason that the reactant is more conjugated than the product. Also, I know from the conformation of cyclooctane of cyclooctane or, or eight-membered rings with multiple pi bonds, those pi bonds are not necessarily planar, just due to the the, the angle strain that would occur. So the product is significantly less conjugated than the reactant. And so you can irradiate this at something like 300 nanometers, which is close to the absorbance max of the reactant. 
and the product doesn't absorb at 300 nanometers, and you can just rely on this reaction to not be reversible under those conditions. Um, and here's one more, and um, this one's also under photochemical conditions. But, you know, we'll do this one under heat. Well, I'll do it under thermal conditions as well. And we'll see how we get something different. Right? Here is a reaction where I've got a cyclobutene fused to a cyclohexane. And cyclobutenes are actually more likely to undergo electrocyclic ring opening reactions. So this four-membered ring is going to open and relieve a lot of that angle strain. So the question is, how do we identify how many electrons there are so that we can go up and use the Woodward-Hoffman rules? Right? So we have two pi electrons in the pi bond. But we're also going to have two sigma electrons that are going to count here, too. Right? And that's because as this bond, that sigma bond breaks, the ultimate outcome here is going to be, in fact, difficult to draw, depending on the stereochemical outcome. But that ring's going to open up to a 1,3-butadiene kind of system. The overall stereochemistry is yet to be seen, but it's going to open up here to something that has four pi electrons. So we have four electrons, so that's the first row, an even number of electron pairs under photochemical conditions, so this is disrotatory. Right? So disrotatory means that one is going clockwise and the other is going counterclockwise. So we can assume that, for example, that this hydrogen is rotating down, this hydrogen is rotating down, and the, the rings are also rotating down. And interestingly enough, this is going to end up with the ring being end up with the stereochemistry of the the system being all cis. Right? Those hydrogens here they are are rotating away from the structure into the plane of this molecule. Now, if this reaction were to be done under thermal conditions instead of photochemical conditions, if it was disrotatory under, or under photochemical conditions, it's going to be conrotatory under thermal conditions, which means one hydrogen's rotating down, the other hydrogen's rotating up. And the stereochemistry in the structure of the product is going to be cis for one of the pi bonds and trans for the other. And then that, that gets tricky to draw. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so this gets ugly because it's hard to represent eight carbon atoms all squished down like this. But it can be done. And it's not pretty, but there it is, right? It's cis on one end and, one, and trans on the other. And probably a reasonable amount of, of, of strain going around this system. Okay. So here are just four examples of uh, using the Woodward-Hoffman uh, rules to predict the stereochemical outcome of uh, electrocyclic reactions. Thank you for watching.